Hey, it's Tim with the University of Vinyl. Thanks again for tuning in today. If you're new to the channel and maybe you've stumbled across this video or some of my other recent videos, please consider subscribing. Please like the video. And I love people who interact and leave comments. It's one of the main reasons that I get so much joy from doing these videos and kind of sharing my vinyl record collecting excursion. So consider subscribing. Um, maybe it's a New Year's resolution. I don't ask uh, people to subscribe as much as maybe I should. Or if you watch other channels, a lot of people make it a point to do this in the first 30 seconds. Uh, and there are theories out there that if you don't ask, you don't get. Anyway, speaking of the new year, happy new year, everybody. Thanks again. Um, I'm filming this on New Year's Eve day, and I haven't decided if I'm going to put this out tonight or tomorrow on New Year's Day, but hope everyone is having or has had a safe and happy new year. I think I just missed something on eBay. <laughs> yep, sure enough. I missed out on a nice copy of uh, Bobby Hutcherson's Head On. Uh, you know, the, the record where he's holding the hat on his head. Um, I had a high bid of $31.99 someone. Someone rushed in in the last 30 seconds, as always happens on, on uh, eBay, and uh, picked it up for like $32 something, which is still a great price. Uh, where were we? Happy New Year, everybody. I have about, uh, eight records that I've picked up in the last two weeks, and I thought, you know, it's kind of an eclectic mix of records, and I thought it would be worth, uh, you know, combining these and showing them in a video, um, to kind of show you where I'm at these days. Um, and I have maybe a, a resolution or two personally that I might uh, weave into the into the narrative as we go through the video so uh, stay tuned for that so I've been toying with the idea of putting out an overview of ECM jazz records I've been picking up a lot over the last two months I, you know, I put out a video on Steely Dan's Gaucho called Gaucho Amigos. Check it out if you are a Steely Dan fan. And I needed to find the 1974 album Belongings, uh, which was Keith Jarrett, uh, Jan Garbarek, Pal Danielson, and John Christensen. Um, a cool cover. If you know ECM you kind of know the vibe of these records. But this is a really lively record. And the second record, I have another ECM I'm going to show in a moment. But, you know, this is a famous record simply because uh, Keith Jarrett successfully sued Steely Dan for the writing credit or co-writing credit of the title song from Gaucho because it closely resembles the third track on side one, which is uh, Long As You Know You're Living Yours. All you have to do is put that song on and it's incredibly obvious that uh, absolutely Donald Fagan was inspired uh, by that song. And he admitted as much uh, in an interview um, after the album came out, and I thought, I think Keith Jarrett's people probably saw the interview, or maybe Keith Jarrett saw it, and after hearing the song, uh, they definitely had a case. And for that reason, Keith Jarrett is now uh, co-credited as a co-writer of, uh, of the title track to Gaucho. Besides all of that, this is just a great sounding record, and uh, really happy that I finally found a copy. Up next is another ECM title that I have been looking for. You know, I, I did a, a little scan on YouTube and watched a couple of videos from different folks. I think uh, uh, Ken McAuliffe, uh, had a, he's had a couple um, ECM 
uh, videos recommending recommending different titles. Um, but this one has always been really highly regarded. This, of course, is Pat Metheny, Bright Size Life, uh, with the great Jocko Pistorius on bass, Bob Moses on drum. Metheny is playing both a 12 and a 6 string, and this is just a gorgeous record. You know, I put this on my system as my, you know, system currently is, and, you know, it just kind of makes me satisfied, you know, happy with the the setup that I have assembled over the last few years. I've got a, a Macintosh uh, MA61 integrated uh, solid state amp, and I have a Thorin's TD145 turntable, which I love. And uh, the most recent addition to the chain, well, two things. I've got a, I picked up a new uh, Nagioka MP200 moving magnet uh, cart, which I think is an upgrade over the MP110 that I had previously. And uh, of course, I have a vintage pair of uh, Klipsch Cornwall 2s, circa 1986 matching serial numbers. I've talked about this in a fairly recent video. And, you know, thinking ahead to uh, 2024, I'm thinking about maybe I need an upgrade in the Phono stage, the Phono preamp department. And I'm jealous. I watched uh, Bob Radley's recent video uh, for the Deckware ZB3 uh, little tube amp, the low watt tube amp that Deckware um, has available. Um, that is, if you get on the waiting list, there is a long list. I think it took Bob Bradley two years. So I'm thinking about maybe uh, signing up for one of those, putting in a deposit. Uh, I want to do a little more re research and maybe uh, reach out to Bob and see what he thinks about that so far. I think he loves it. I also follow Jim from Record Collector News. Great publication, by the way. Check it out if you haven't seen it before. Uh, uh, Record Collector News. Look for it on Google. Uh, Jim, I think, has got a ZB3 as well. So um, it's something that has been on my radar for a while, and I've been hemming and hawing about it. A lot of people love the warm-sounding uh, phono stage of these vintage uh, Macs, but... I don't know. I'm always thinking and searching and wondering. Um, this is what we do, right? So I am considering, um, you know, signing up for the ZP3 and maybe going that route. Anyway, that was kind of a long uh, byway aside. This is uh, one of the best ECM titles. There's a quick look. You know, that fat ECM uh, logo uh, is the original. Uh, the represses and later reissues have got a kind of a thinner ECM. All of these ECM titles, they will show off your system. They, they sound absolutely amazing. A lot of these can be demo disc if you're, you know, adding something new to your chain and you want to check things out. Or... Uh, you've got a, a, a vinyl naysayer over to your house and you want to kind of hopefully blow their hair back, put on any of these ECM titles. They are simply breathtaking. There's Mr. Matheny on the back cover. Um, you know, also, uh, if you find some of the, the, the ECM titles from the late 70s into the early 80s, uh, a lot of those were done at Master Disc. The U.S. pressings, uh, not the German pressings, but the U.S. pressings were done at Master Disc uh, by Robert Ludwig. So you'll see RL in the Dead Wax. Here's a pickup. Uh, you know, I went out yesterday afternoon, uh, Saturday, one of my favorite days to go do a little digging if I have time, if I can get away. And I found this. Uh, this is Parliament. Motor Booty Affair from 1978. 
someone named Gay, I think, uh, <laughs> put their name on the cover. And I think it's on the record label as well. Wow, this is just... <laughs> um, George Clinton, pr produced and conceived by George Clinton for Thang Incorporated. I love it. Uh, side one, Mr. Wiggles. Uh, rump of steel skin, you're a fish and I'm a water sign. And then finally, Aqua Boogie closes out side one. Side two, one of those funky things, liquid sunshine, the motor booty affair, and deep. <laughs> um, I don't know what to think about this. I've only given it one listen. Uh... The reason I picked this up is, A, it was in near mint condition. It's an original. Uh, you'll find AZ in the Dead Wax. It was uh, mastered at Alan Zentz. It is a great sounding recording. And it's a pretty cool uh, package as well. There's Mr. Clinton. Um, by the way, my wife has got a friend in Toronto. And there was some special showing um, this person who does these high-end shoes. The name is escaping me. And my wife has got a friend here in the Denver area who traveled to Toronto to go to the show. And George Clinton and his wife were there. They are huge fans of this, uh, uh, of these shoes. The girlfriend of my wife bumped into George Clinton and his wife in the elevator and they couldn't, she couldn't say enough nice things about George Clinton, how lovely he was, just a fantastic sweetheart of a guy. So props to George. This is a very cool uh, package. It had, uh, you know, they did all uh, these little cartoon characters um, that are actually characters in some of these songs. And this is a totally perfect intact uh, copy of this so I picked it up for like 30 bucks and you know there's a couple stars here this might have been maybe uh, you know maybe in a radio station where they have kind of you know ID the tracks that they want to include in uh, you know normal rotation who knows anyway fun record I uh, I like it. <laughs> it's not something that I will play all the time, but um, the complete package was there. Uh, the pristine nature of those die cut characters. So pretty cool find. If you didn't catch my recent, uh, my top finds of uh, used finds of 2023, I included John Martin's incredible uh, 73 album, Solid Air, in that mix. I found a great... Uh, Pink Rim Island, UK, original pressing here in Fort Collins. Well, a couple weeks ago, I also found uh, One World. And this is a Dead Mint uh, UK repress. I had to look this up, but this is what is called the Island Bubbles label. And... Gorgeous, gorgeous. I don't think it had ever been played. This was sitting in a discounted bin of $5 records at a shop called Bazaar Bazaar um, that I frequent, um, you know, once a week if I can. And I was overjoyed to find this. This is a really cool record. And... You know, like most of John Martin records, it's a late night record. Um, and it's a, this is a very emotional listen. Um, you know, John Martin, a bit of a troubled soul. And, but the key word here is soul. This music is so soulful. And Martin's unique uh, voice is just incredible as well. Um, couldn't Love You More is a breathtaking song, as is uh, Dealer and One World. 
Uh, this is a cheap record. Uh, you can find U.S. pressings. You can find U.K. pressings. Uh, they pressed a lot of these. Uh, it's highly recommended if you haven't heard it before. John Martin's One World. This is something that could have made my top 10 list for 2023. And it is a 2009 uh, Acoustic Sounds, their Blue Note reissue series of Horace Silver uh, Quintet's The Tokyo Blues. Um, definitely a hard bop classic. And you'll see that this is one of the double 45 uh, acoustic uh, copies. It was um, numbered. So a limited edition. This is, I think, uh, yep, number 306. Uh, didn't come in a gatefold. That's the only knock that I would have on this. The music is absolutely sublime. Uh, I really like Horace Silver, and this is, uh, you know, this is kind of famous uh, as far as the inception idea that Horace Silver had for this record. He had just finished a tour of Japan. And um, now let's just read it. You know, this album is dedicated to all of our many fans in Japan and to all of the Japanese people who were so kind to us while we were uh, making our, con our concerts over there. While in Japan, I noticed that the Japanese people were very fond of Latin music which I also am very fond of. In, in writing some of these compositions, I have attempted to combine the Japanese feeling in the melodies uh, with the Latin feeling in the rhythm. So on side two of this record, uh, the Tokyo Blues followed by Cherry Blossom, just incredible stuff. Uh, Blue Mitchell on trumpet, Junior Cook, an amazing tenor sax player who really stands out on this record. Uh, Silver is on piano, of course. Gene Taylor on bass. John Harris Jr. on drums. Uh, a pretty cool find. Um, I think this is probably, yeah, out of print from 2009. I don't know if there's been a Tone Poet or a classic reissue uh, put out by Blue Note or not, but um, hearing this, it sounds absolutely amazing. Um, this is a really nice copy to seek out and find. Um, I think the median right now on this record is around $85 on Discogs, and I picked it up for about $20 less than that, and the records are in near mint condition. I picked this up, Miles Davis, Sketches of Spain, uh, you know, 1960, an amazing record. Um, you can see that this is in really good condition. Uh, this is a stereo pressing, as you can see. <laughs> the reason I picked this up is, A, the music is fantastic. It is a uh, Columbia 6i. And it's an early uh, six eye. You can see on the label at the very top, you may be able to see CBS uh, at the top of the label there. And, uh, you know, on right between stereo fidelity. Uh, the CBS was not added until uh, the first repressings of the record. So, I've got this dated to 1961. It's in near mint condition. It was $19 where I found this record. Um, the sleeve is in great shape. Now, I know that for most of the Miles Davis catalog, the at least the earlier titles, we could talk about the, the you know that Electric Years box set by Vinyl Me Please. It's supposed to be amazing. And I'm thinking about trying to find one of those because it is sold out. Um, you know, MoFi has done a great job with the Miles Davis catalog. But if I can find an original 6i or near original, a first repress, for under $20 in near mint condition, I'm jumping on it. Okay, let's switch gears and talk about 
1969 record uh, that I love, uh, a double LP, and something that I have been actively looking for. I've been looking for an original uh, Columbia 2i on that record. And I, you know, I find them occasionally, I see them out in the wild occasionally, but the problem is the condition is just not there. <laughs> so I was in Boulder last week. Uh, we went down for lunch and I found a reissue uh, from Rhino of the debut Chicago album, Chicago Transit Authority. Uh, this was reissued and put out in 2009 by Rhino. Very nice audiophile quality pressing of this record. Dead Mint. Uh, and it was mastered by Chris Bellman. So in doing a little bit of research, this one is pretty highly regarded out there. I don't know, what, what does everybody think about uh, your favorite pressing of the debut Chicago album? Let me know in the comments if you... If you've got a uh, skin in the game and, and you're, uh, you're interested in that record or you might have something that you think sounds better. To my ears, this sounds really, really nice and really incredible stereo imaging on this thing. I think Chris Bellman hit this one out of the park. Um, and, uh, you know, definitely out of print since 2009. Apparently they put out a 50th anniversary remix of the record that I think um, most people hate. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with that original mix of that record. So um, I'm glad that in this, this is a, a AAA all analog cut from Bellman. So if you are looking for a copy, you know, uh, you know, check out eBay, check out Discogs, but this is highly, highly recommended. Uh, I picked that up last week at Paradise Found, which is a fantastic record shop in Boulder on Pearl Street. Uh, Pearl, Pearl Street is kind of a pedestrian walking mall. It's really a great shopping experience. Uh, they're a little bit further down the block, but um, one of my favorite record shops in northern Colorado is Paradise Found. So shout out to you guys. Uh, during that same visit, I picked up a copy uh, of uh, New Order's 12-inch. Um, this is uh, True Faith. There are two mixes of True Faith on here. And then 1963. Uh, this is an American uh, pressing. Um, there is a flower in the dead wax, which is Brian Gardner's mastering little symbol. He, he usually does seagulls or flowers. Um, I'm kind of all in on New Year. I'm kind of all in on, uh, on New Order 12-inch singles when I can find them. And uh, this is a fun listen. Uh, it's got two different mixes. And I think this came out uh, when Substance was, uh, was put out back in 1987. Uh, it brings me back to, you know, I lived in Chicago in the, in the late 80s. And there was a couple, you know, warehouse clubs down uh, down near uh, the Chicago River. And, uh, you know, this brings me back. Walking in there, you would definitely, you would definitely hear, uh, you know, New Order 12-inch dance singles. So back in 2002, James Taylor put out a brand new record of original music. Um, something that has been pretty sporadic for James Taylor, you know, from, let's say, 2000 up to today. And that record, I fell in love with the CD. I fell in love with the music and, and the songs and, and the album in general. I'm talking about uh, October Road. There's a look at the back cover. Um, I was looking on Amazon... Uh, my family does, my extended family does a Secret Santa thing for Christmas. So I had to go pick a few things to put on a wish list. There was some app that my niece 
found in uh, it made it very very simple <laughs> uh, for your secret Santa to to uh, go ahead and find things for you if you had populated your wish list. I was stunned. I found this on Amazon and this is from Analog Spark and it is a new brand new it was a brand new sealed copy of this record it's a double uh 33 um so you have a lot of music on this uh original cd spread out over four sides of of high quality um vinyl uh, this is a staunton uh staunton cover as well really really substantial and really nice this sounds amazing it was uh mastered by kevin gray you'll find kevin gray at coherent in the dead wax and the cool thing about this is it is on amazon right now for 46 dollars. so there is a seller on amazon who must have some dead stock or something um, because this came out originally in 2018 and analog spark i believe is uh, defunct. Um, I'm going to look for some other titles that they put out because this is really well done. Anyway, if you are interested in this record, go on Amazon. Just do a search for October Road James Taylor Vinyl. You'll find it. Uh, and go on Discogs because it's, it's interesting. I've done it in the past because I've been looking for this. And I went on Discogs, and there is only one copy available in the U.S. at around $76. I think there's another copy from a Canadian seller that's even more. Hey, my battery just overheated in my camera, so I'm, I'm switching to my phone uh, because I want to wrap this video up. Anyway, um, as I was saying, if you are at all interested in this record, uh, go on Amazon and I think there are only 10 copies left right now. So 46 bucks, highly recommended. Great album from James Taylor. Take care, everybody. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching again. Please subscribe if you uh, have not subscribed yet. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Take care.